ok everybody please rise as the cortege comes in Before I start, I'd like to ask everyone to silence their mobile phone, please. Dear graduates, honored guests, colleagues, students, and guests online, good afternoon. Welcome to IHE Delft Institute for Water Education graduation and closing ceremony of the academic period 2023-2024. Dear graduates, it's an honor to join you today to celebrate this important milestone. As the alumni relation advisor at IHE Delft, I'm thrilled to welcome you into our alumni family. From this day forward, you are part of an incredible network of water professionals that spans over 25,000 members from 190 countries. Today, as you receive your diplomas, we recognize and celebrate your perseverance, dedication, and achievements. You have overcome numerous challenges and show and a waving commitment throughout this journey. Very well done. Reflecting on the past, it's incredible to see how much you have grown, both personally and professionally. When you first arrived in Delft, you took a bold step, leaving behind the comfort of your home, countries, families, and friends. But in exchange, you found a vibrant community of peers from every corner of the world. And strangers soon became collaborators and classmates turned into lifelong friends. Together, you navigated the ups and downs, shared knowledge and inspired each other in ways that will leave a lasting impact on your careers and lives. You are now equipped with new skills, broadened perspectives, and a global network. This experience has not just transformed your knowledge, but the way you see the world. The friendship and connections you have made here will continue to be a source of strength and support wherever your careers take you. Joining the IHE Delft alumni community is a privilege that brings lifelong benefits as you move forward, I encourage you to stay connected, to reach out to fellow alumni in your field, 
attend alumni events and contribute actively to this unique network. Remember that this community is a resource that will continue to open doors, offer guidance and provide opportunities for collaboration. Be an active participant and make the most of it. Today is a celebration of your accomplishments and we have a fantastic program planned with inspiring speeches, special performances, and of course, the much anticipated awarding ceremony. So, without further ado, it is my pleasure to invite Professor Eddie Morse, the rector of IHE Delft, to the stage to deliver his opening speech. Thank you very much, uh, Maria Laura, and uh, I would like to welcome all of you. Um, I would like to welcome all distinguished guests, large part sitting on that side, but uh, I would also very much uh, like to welcome uh, you, uh, the students and soon to be alumni of uh, IG Delft. And I would like to also welcome all friends and family that are here, but also people watching us online. And I hope that you will celebrate together with us, I think, this, this very special day. A couple of days ago, um, I had a talk uh, with a colleague and we reflected a little bit on, okay, what is that that you remember um, later on when you're maybe becoming my age uh, in, in your life? And for me, and I think that will also be for you, it's actually this period, uh, the period that you study, that you meet friends, that you have a lot of different uh, situations that come to you. And I think by that, uh, this experience is a very important part and will stay with you uh, for the rest of your life. Now, there's another thing that I think, and Maria Laura already mentioned that, it's about making friends. And I think making friends is also what we think is needed. And I think looking at the turmoil in the world today, I think we need more friends than we have at the moment. And I would like to invite you actually to reach out uh, not only to one another, but also use the alumni network that you're becoming a member of to reach out to other persons, but also go outside of this network and reach out your hand and take people along with you. I hope that with the knowledge that you gathered in the, the last year, uh, that you will be able also uh, to become a leader, and a leader in the, in the water sector, but also a leader uh, that can be an example on what uh, can be done and how you can improve livelihood in your surroundings, in your community, maybe in your government, uh, but maybe also very close by in your family. So I hope that you will take that opportunity. Now to make that available, uh, you need actually sponsors that do that. So I would like to uh, make use of this occasion here to thank all the sponsors that have made it available and possible for you to come here and join us. Unfortunately, sometimes things change, and so we are also looking at a period where a large part of the Dutch scholarship program will end, but we hope and we expect that we can continue with our scholarships, but we're looking for new ways, and we would like to also reach out to you. I think it would be very nice, because I know that also our alumni are also our ambassadors outside the world uh, that you keep on uh, actually asking uh, students if they're interested to come to IG Delft, please approach us and we're looking for ways to do that. Some of the sponsors uh, that are also sitting here in uh, the church with you are also there and I would like to invite them to continue what they're doing because I think you're one of the examples where you can see how money is well spent. Sometimes, and if you would look at uh, that, then you will see that every dollar spent on education, you will get back about 10 times. That's in your personal life. But if you look at your community and your surrounding, it's even more than that. If you look even wider than that, it goes up to more than 100 times uh, the investments that you do that will come back to the community. And why is that? That is because, first of all, you may make a an, an career step, but you also may make progress in there. In that way, you can also take care of your family and friends, but by doing that, you can also take care of your community. You will make sure that there is another income that's there. 
but also on the way of health and on how you direct and show this leadership in your community may help to improve that. And in the end, I think that may help to increase the value of your community and your country in the world and also for all the friends and loved ones that you have. With that, I would like to ask actually special attention for our guest speaker of today. And I would like uh, to invite uh, Dr. Mumba. And Dr. Mumba is um, the Secretary General of the Convention of the Wetlands. And I think she's one of the examples, if I'm talking about leadership, how you could do that. And I hope that she is also an inspiration to you. And I think this is a quite special occasion because I don't know if you remember that she was also there when you started. And I know after having a meeting with her yesterday that she's very interested to speak again with you to see where you're standing now and how you can proceed. So Dr. Mumba, can I invite you and take over? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Wow, you look handsome and beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, family, friends, members of the diplomatic corps, I'm so honored and really privileged to be speaking to you today, this afternoon, at such a, an auspicious occasion and a very beautiful moment in your life. And congratulations once more. Bravo. You know, you've graduated at a very pivotal moment in our planetary dynamic, and especially when we're dealing with water issues. So I want to say to you that you're at a moment of crossroads of so many things that are happening to you, and I cannot even imagine what is going through your minds. But I will share a little bit of my experience and maybe how I also felt being in your seat. But more importantly, I also want to share what inspired me to become a wetland ecologist. At the age of 13, I grew up in the northern part of Zambia, next to the Congo DRC. And at the age of 13, my father took me and my twin sister and my siblings in this rickety Toyota Stout and would sleep at the back and drive hundreds of kilometers to a place called Lokinba in the north of Zambia, in the south of Zambia, beautiful place. It was the first place I saw a floodplain system. I was fascinated and I was intrigued. How does the water go and come back? And it is that place I returned to to do my PhD at University College London. I share this experience because I'm always convinced that something during your affirmative years and your childhood determines your path. You're inspired by something that you have seen in your communities. And so I want to offer you four, just four guiding principles which I have found to be extremely useful for my life. And I call them the four C's, as in the letter C. And these have really helped me in my experience as I navigate my career and as I journey through. And with each C, I will tell you a tiny little story. So we'll start with the first C, change. We know that only one thing in life is constant, change. As Professor Morris just mentioned, I was here just hardly a year ago. That was in November. A lot has happened in these few months, or not so few months. Last year in September, I was in Austria. I was wearing a t-shirt, lifeguard, and on a boat on the Danube River. Exactly the same time this year, there's been massive floods across the Danube. And this year in August, I went home tragically for something very sad because my father died on the 6th of August. But something hit me when I was there in my hometown, the very place where I was introduced to wetlands and the very place where the man who inspired me, my own dad, to become who I became had passed away. But also something was happening in my country, Zambia, where I'm from. Blackouts, 
22 hours of no power, electricity. Why? Because there was a change in the system of our hydrology. The Kariba Dam, which generates the hydroelectricity shared together with Zimbabwe, is less than 10% at capacity. There's a massive drought in the Sadak region. Some of you will be returning to this region. People will be asking you for guidance. What do we do? There's a drought. You, you're now the expert from IHE Delft. Tell us, what do you think? What should we do? And perhaps you'll be asking yourselves, what skills have I learned in this place so that I can pivot? Or I can become a different person? And as I occupy this role, maybe you, you left as an, as an engineer of some sort, what do I need to do to navigate this change? Because that's the only thing that's constant. And with that comes the second C, complexity. Because life as it is, is complex. The world that you navigated 12 months ago is a different world. Just a few days ago, we have all been watching on our televisions in shock about seeing all these hurricanes, two hurricanes coming to meet one from each side of the oceans, the Pacific and the Atlantic. Now Milton is causing havoc, havoc in the U U Yucatan Peninsula. People don't even know what to do. I was in Mexico last year and I was blown away about how dry Mexico is. And now hearing about this <laughs> Milton hurricane, I'm confused. I saw on the list of countries that there's someone from Lebanon. You'll be returning to a country of complexity and perhaps you'll be asking yourself, how do you manage water in a space of conflict? And I want you to also imagine that part of this complexity is so interconnected. Ghana. I went to Ghana. I was blown away. I love their, their food, their kelewele. So yummy. But I was also very confused about how many or how much second-hand clothes from the global north find themselves in the rivers of Ghana. And you can see that from space. So then you ask yourself a question. As you deal with this complexity, the issues of human rights, the issues of mining, the issues of conditions of complexity that you're entering in as you return back home. So as a middle manager, how will you do and deal with this poly crisis? Because it's not just one crisis that you're dealing with. And as you ponder on these questions, I give you the third C. Courage. As I come to you with this third C, I want to offer you a quote from the late Nelson Mandela, not only because he came from a close village from where my grandparents were from, because I'm half South African. Nelson said, courage is not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. As you enter this complex world, you will not have anticipated a lot of the change that has happened. You will arrive back home and you'll ask yourself a question, what happened here? Am I ready to be a part of these changes in this complex space? Am I the right person? Part of courage is realizing and accepting that I know I may not have all the answers, but I will ask someone for help. You know, in 2021, I was the COVID hire. I became the director of the UNDP Rome Center in Italy to support Prime Minister Draghi and the team and the Italian government for the G20 presidency. And as fate had it, there were also the co-presidency for the COP26 together with the United Kingdom. I knew nothing about G20 processes. I knew nothing about debt swaps, financial, complexity, I asked my question, how do you even deal with these issues in a pandemic, post-pandemic world? I was afraid. And I was a whole director with a team. They were looking at me like, she must know the answer to these issues. But it took courage for me to admit that I knew nothing of these issues and that I was going 
to learn. And that brings me to the last and final C, curiosity. I became curious. I did not understand a word of Italian except grazie. So I said, well, I need to learn a few words so that when I go into these meetings, I just really understand what all of this means. And in that curiosity, I remembered in my memory some lessons from my two grandmothers. My late grandmothers always taught me to remain curious. They say that as you enter spaces, be curious about what those places are. Because what curiosity does is to really give you a moment to have self-introspection and to think, I think they might know something. That woman in that village may know something. And I know that you're experts in water and sustainable development, but remain curious. Because with remaining curious, you will learn. And by being curious, you'll be open to new knowledge. And as you remain ambassadors of this institution that you're exiting from, you will also begin to reflect and say, there must be another institute that has done something similar. What can I learn from them and bring that together in this space of complexity, change, and remaining curious, and also, more importantly, being courageous. So in closing, I would like to say that I feel very fortunate in many ways that my journey has not been a journey of solitude. As a Kosa, we believe in the very epitome of Ubuntu. I am because we are. Your families are here to support you. Your friends are here to support you. You are because we are. And so, on many accounts, I feel very privileged. And as I watch you, very excited and ready to embrace this new journey, I want to wish you well. And I also want to say, I've been very blessed in my career because I started as an intern at the Convention on Wetlands in 1998, and I have returned as the Secretary General to head it. Your journey is not complete yet. Keep going and rise. So here we are. All the best and go and be the best. Bon courage. Thank you very, very much, Dr. Mumba, for that inspiring speech. Thank you very much. So, after so many uplifting and motivation words, we are ready for a musical interlude by Bechdad and Alma, on acoustic guitar Alma and on electrical guitar Bechdad, who will play two songs written by Bob Dylan. The first one, blowing in the wind, and the second one, Forever Young. Please, the floor is of the musicians.
Thank you very much. And let us give them a loud round of applause. Okay, focus. <laughs> um, now I invite to the stage Ahmed Saber Sagna from Egypt, and after him, Isaac Tuna from Kenya. They are graduating students and members of the former Student Association Board, and they will give this year's student address. So, please, first, Ahmed, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. My dear friends, good afternoon. It's been really lovely to experience IHE and graduate with you. As I stand here today at the end of this long and challenging year, I can't help but look back on all the things we've sacrificed along the way. Time, energy, sometimes even a bit of our sanity. For some of us, this year has brought a profound personal changes. Some of us became mothers and fathers for the first time. We've learned to love, laugh, and care, and even look at the world in different lenses. But alongside these milestones, we've also faced losses, people, experiences, and moments we wished could last longer. For some of us, these we've loved and depended on are no longer here to celebrate these achievements with us. But their memories stand alongside us today to remind us that even in loss, we've grown stronger. And yet, Despite these strengths and changes, I find being human in the 21st century often feels frustrating. We live at the height of human progress, many of us healthier and wealthier and more connected than ever before. Yet, at the same time, life is incredibly hard. Yesterday, over 15,000 children died. 700 million people live in extreme poverty. Even within privileged societies, inequalities and daily struggles persist. We face divisions, create new problems while failing to solve the old ones, and watch as our world is eroded. It's easy to feel powerless in the face of challenges so immense. The state of the world can fill us with doom, hopelessness, and sadness. I feel it too. It's a story we all know. Much of it is true, but as Terry Pratchett said, we're the storytelling ab, ape. We think in narratives. And it's these stories that shape our reality. So without ignoring the darkness, I want to offer a different story of ours, one that gives us hope. It's the story of a military engineering school that chose to embody strength through gentleness and transformed into water sciences institution. This place where people from five continents and 36 countries came together, shared the common goal to be resilient in the face of overwhelming odds to protect and uplift those in need. And I believe that words and ideas can change the world. Because no matter what anyone tells you, they can. Whether you intend to or not, you already are changing the world. Between the grind of going to jobs we don't particularly love to make money that isn't quite enough, we will write Instagram captions tonight and leave messages behind that our children and loved ones will one day read and reread when they miss us. Our words and actions even the smallest ones leave marks. And finally, after all this hard work, I need you to consider simply stepping back after this, after the speeches, the parties, the drunken confessions, and the sobering realization of that, there will be a moment when you're alone with the unnerving truth. Your professors and supervisors don't really know much more than you do. We're all just trying to make it look like we, were, uh, uh, we are not winging it. But despite what you may have been led to believe, there is time. There is time for everything, especially time to sit at your desk wishing you were anywhere else. So go do that thing, chase that experience, take yourself a little less seriously and take your friendships incredibly seriously. Do not worry about figuring it all, all out tonight. I certainly haven't. And above all, my friend, keep in touch. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Ahmed. I invite to the stage Isaac Tuna from Kenya, also member of the former Student Association Board, and he will give the second address. Esteemed faculty, distinguished guests, beloved family and friends, and most importantly, the stars of the show tonight, the graduates of the class 2024. Good evening to you. Dr. Mumba, I'm always inspired by the kind words that you give and the inspiration that you had uh, for us. At the beginning of the year, you shared your life journey to inspire us as we embarked on our path here. Your reflections on how your childhood experience shaped your ambitions served as a powerful reminder that we can leverage our backgrounds to make a remarkable achievement. It's inspiring to have you here once more to witness how far we've come on our journey. As a student representative, I assure you that this batch not only has been inspired to gain the knowledge, but they also developed the qualities that define future water leaders, leaders who know and understand their personal water stories. Reflecting on this past uh, year's journey, I'm filled with gratitude from the experiences we've shared and the growth we have achieved together. I have had the privilege of sharing classrooms and group assignments with many of you, and it's been incredible to see and experience the unique perspectives you all brought to the table that enriched our discussions and learning. I believe that I have been transformed, and as we all have been transformed by this experience, growing together in ways that we never imagined and forming a lasting connections with one another. To my peers, this moment marks a culmination of a remarkable journey that, are, that has brought us together from different corners of the world. We came from different regions where water is either an abundant or scarce, a source of peace or conflict, and a tool for development or a tool for destruction. Yet, despite these contrasts, we shared a common goal to learn how to become better stewards of it. It hasn't been an easy path. Some has faced greater challenges than others, but through it all, you have demonstrated remarkable resilience, creativity, and a strong sense of community. Because of this, I would like all of you to reflect on the good parts of this journey. The friendships we've built, the happy and memorable times we've had, and the positivity that has kept everything all together. For this reason, ACB has compiled uh, moments for you in our yearbook 2024 that showcases our collective efforts and reflection of memories we've built together. Thank you for contributing to this book. There's an arrangement for you to pick it uh, once you leave the stage. Serving on the student board has been an honor and privilege for me. You've made our work easier because you are a strong, uh, you, you, because you are strong, a uh, sense of community that you've built and the compassion that you've extended to each other. On the student board, I have been, it's been a pleasure for me uh, to work with compassionate and self-driven colleagues. They took their time to make sure that they attended to student matters even when the time was limited to do so. So for that, I extend my heartfelt appreciation to you, Ahmed, Janet, Okech, and Emdil uh, Arifha. I take this opportunity to also thank the students' committee that we've worked together as with ACB to organize events and uh, networking committees. The yearbook committee has done an amazing work and I, I appreciate your efforts. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to the staff, 
at the Student Welfare Office. I appreciate you for always offering a listening ear and entertaining our impromptu visit to your offices for guidance. The communications and liaison office, the repro, the program coordinators, and the rectorate, Eddie, your doors were all, always open for students' concerns. To our families and friends who are here today, thank you for your prayers and support that you've offered as we navigated our life outside our countries. Our esteemed faculty at IHE, thank you for imparting the knowledge that make us grounded and prepare us to face the challenges of an imperfect world. Your support and encouragement and guidance have been an invaluable journey th uh, throughout this journey. So to the class of 2024, I'm not graduating with you or as the people from uh, social media will say, I'm not the graduant, but I'm the graduant's friend. So I wish you all the best in your endeavors. Go out and be the change that the world needs. Because if not you, then who? Thank you. Thank you very much, Isaac. So, very important, insightful remarks. Good. Now, finally the time has arrived. Ooh. We are about to start the diploma awarding ceremony. So first, let us start with a word for the graduates. When you come to the stage, please stand between your professor and your track coordinator. Calm. You pose for the graduation picture, holding your diploma. Don't forget it. And I will call each of you up to the stage from this side, one by one. And when you leave the stage, you will receive a token of, you will leave from this side. And you will receive a token of appreciation that we invite you to wear for a final group picture. So, without further ado, we will start the ceremony with the awarding of the first thematic track, Water Has Our Recent Climate Students. I would like to ask the track coordinator, William Fabeik, and Chris Savenbergen, professor of flood resilience and urban of, of flood resilience of urban system on a stage. Climate change is causing water hazards and risk, and the world needs to adapt. A student in, a students in the water hazard risk and climate track have focused on three components. They have described and qualified spatio-temporal climate risk. They have developed fit-for-purpose adaptation pathways and associated measures. And they have defined appropriate approaches in governance, engineering, and information. The students learn about water-sensitive cities climate adaptation, politics, water conflict and financing, droughts and flood management, and about sea level rise and coastal adaptation in rapidly urbanizing deltas. Okay, all is ready, so we would like to start inviting on a stage a student, Sudip Sukla from India. <laughs> Cleopas Wansia Mulebu from Kenya.
Sofia Kabibi Tumaini from Kenya. Sifu Setu Mashishi from South Africa. Herbe Singamon from Chad. Nahed Noor Ali Koror Ahmed from Egypt. <laughs> Emmanuel Nicolas James Labuen from Philippines. Then John Atten Kuol from South Sudan. Esiaba <laughs> Asunta Obianuyu from Nigeria. Mirabuchisa Farage Laundry from the Democratic Republic of Congo. <laughs> Media Yul Hossein from Bangladesh. Manish Kumar from India. <laughs> Hassan Wabilla Dangavaran Dangavarin from Nigeria. Manisha Banik from India. <laughs> Ambilia Banshiku Kikombe from Kenya. Thank you, Professor Sevenbergen.
I call on stage Joanna Popesco, Professor of Hydroinformatics. And I would like to invite on stage a student Zhang Hobo from China. Antoinette Huayi from Liberia. <laughs> Mubtasin Mohamed Salim from Maldives. Linted from Myanmar. <laughs> Chip Choi Je from Hong Kong. Emanuela Danzo from Ghana. Mohamed Mustafa Sayed El Samani from Egypt. <laughs> Ala Alaeddin Mohamed Saidan from Egypt. Sharon Shimase from Kenya. Isar Odur Nyo from Kenya. Destianto Hendrabam from Indonesia. <laughs> Armano Sibarich from Croatia.
Kanjige Margaret Njoki from Kenya. TV Nicolas Justin Isia from South Sudan. And Brian David Cansiman Seniño from Colombia. Thank you, William and Professor Popesco. For the thematic track in Water and Hills, I call on stage the track coordinator Konstantina Bekushova and Maria Kennedy, Professor of Water Treatment Technology. Safe water and sanitation are key to public and environmental health, and they are human rights. Students in this track have engaged with the links between water and health. They learn how drinking water provision and sanitation implementation are related to human health, urbanization, the environment, climate change, human behavior, and crisis. They learn to evaluate, develop, design, and manage sanitation or drinking water provision. This includes the treatment and reuse of water, as well as transport and distribution. Students also learn about broader technological, socioeconomic, and public health issues, including management and governments. I would like to invite on stage a student Abrar Abol Adam from Ethiopia. Belgena Gamache Kanchura Sanjiva from Sri Lanka. <laughs> El Sleiman Tome from Lebanon. Dylan Andreas Clark Heber from Barbados. <laughs> Gutema Mulato Shifera from Ethiopia. Wabena Asyama from Ghana.
Elvis José Lizardo Montialegre from Venezuela. Naol Tadesebenti from Ethiopia. <laughs> Catherine Herrera Paiva from Colombia. To Sakpa William from Ghana. <laughs> Bandugu Kenneth Odibor from Kenya. Nurdurusu Arnon Minsibi from Svatini. <laughs> Rosia Tabu Ochien from Kenya. Alfonsina Emanuel Ntivimba from Tanzania. Leonardo Porto Nazareth from Brazil. <laughs> Manon David Aban Mabak from South Sudan. Tafaru John Daba from Nigeria. <laughs> Olubatusin Devora Oyatoye from Nigeria. Metusela Ashub Bahame from Tanzania.
Ibrahim Toure from Gambia. And last but not least, Atsuko Jane Bright from Nigeria. Thank you, Professor Kennedy. I would like to call on a stage Dami Vladjanovic, Professor of Citywide Inclusive Sanitation. We will start with Ranime Fuani from Lebanon. Miwi Kariuki Charles from Kenya. Adama Traore from Mali. Hoka Yvonne from Ghana. Opoka William Tokura Okomu from South Sudan. Ali Musa Hala from Algeria. <laughs> Diana Banjiru Kinyua from Kenya. Rahma Mohamed Mohamud from Kenya. <laughs> Metak Abdul Karen Mohamed. Al Baishi from Yemen. <laughs> Maria Beatriz Alonso Ruiz from Guatemala.
MD Ariful Hawk from Bangladesh. Lorin Banshi Kukyongo from Kenya. Ocharo Albert Onduma from Kenya. Abdi Shahbar Dahir from Somalia. Elvis Ogoe from Ghana. <laughs> Marklan Anthony Shefferson from Jamaica. Peter Arindadje from Uganda. Okun Janis Akech from Kenya. Kiomara <clears throat> Chabeli Pengel from Surinam. Eden Eritrea de Salen from Ethiopia. <laughs> Don Faga Aba Salisu from Nigeria. Giordana Mise Miranda from Brazil.
and Kwa Bene Biemba, leader from the Democratic Republic of Congo, who is in the process of completing his degree. But Thank you, Constantina and Professor Brajanovic. We will continue with the thematic track in water, food, and energy. I call on stage Annelike Ducker, track coordinator, and Charlotte de Fretur, Professor of Land, Water, and Development. Ensuring that all people have access to the food, energy, and water they need is one of the world's biggest challenges now and in the future. Students in the water, food, and energy track examine water-related linkages between food and how low carbon energy production. They consider both integrated and disciplinary approaches for land and water management in the broader context of global and local land and water reforms. And they learn how these approaches related to technological and economic opportunities and how to save words, the environment and social justice while using them. I invite on stage a student Abba Amisa Gyasi from Ghana. Mohamed Reza Jarke from Iran. <laughs> Ashuki Francis Obondo from Kenya. Molina Vino Adongo from Kenya. <laughs> Imu Chiadninisu Michael from Nigeria. Maureen Nuduku Mutune from Kenya. <laughs> Abudun Sainab Ulaitan from Nigeria. Adole Thomas Ahigo from Nigeria.
Ismael Dabacuyo from Burkina Faso. <laughs> Yusuf Barakat from Nigeria. And Ahmed, Ahmed Saber Ali Sayed Ahmed Sagna from Egypt. <laughs> Thank you, Anelike and Professor de Fritur. I would like to call on stage the Profile Coordinator of Government, Governance and Management, Jennifer Schirin, and Peter van der Sach, Professor of Integrated Water Resources Management. I would like to invite on stage Priscilla Frimpon from Ghana. <laughs> Abba Sadat Hatami Mogadam from Iran. Brian Benda Mbabu from Kenya. <laughs> Odira Richard Okelo from Kenya. Olubasen Faith Dorcas from Nigeria. Shemima Alison Okay from United Kingdom.
Begdag Sakroshi Musabi from Iran. Daniel Hennetu Tazel from Ethiopia. Yonga Chon from South Korea. Joshua Zumbasi Amposa from Ghana. And I met Ludovic Pegbende Sumagdogo from Burkina Faso? No. No. No? No. Yeah, but. Okay. Cha Pojo from Myanmar. Thank you, Jennifer and Professor van der Sar. Last but not least, we have arrived at the awarding of the thematic track on water resources and ecosystem health. I would like to invite to the podium the Profile Coordinator of Environment, Constantina Calzono, and Professor Ken Irvine. <laughs> Healthy ecosystems are the basis for health and well-being and sustainability. Students in this track learn about the movement of water through the landscape and they learn how to apply this knowledge to support sustainable management of river basins. They study interlinked in the biofer, the role of biodiversity and the hydrological cycle and the relationship with ecosystem health. They study how ecosystem health underpins human health and well-being. They also learn about measuring and monitoring and about river basin development and environmental management policy processes. And they learn methods for planning and managing water resources. I would like to start inviting on stage a student, Michele Gidai Avera from Ethiopia. Oyoke Harvester Onyibo from Nigeria. Umurasa Olga from Rwanda.
Ahmed Adel Mustafa Mohammed Asab from Egypt. Bangna Preyagani Chan from Fiji. Lina Fraver Nejo from Tanzania. Tamandani Mervis Kamuyanya from Malawi. Ekbuye Unek Bojo Prudence from Nigeria. And Karan Emanuel from Kenya. Thank you, Constantina and Professor Irvine. I would like to invite to the stage the Deputy Program Manager of the Water and Sustainable Development Program, Yap Evers, and Michael McLean, <laughs> Professor. And Michael McLean, Professor of Ecohydrology, on stage. I invite on a stage a student, Narti Evanese Jr. from Ghana. Okay, you yes from Rwanda. Joshua Rafael Dolele from Tanzania. Joshua Gabriel Trotman from Guyana. Tembekli Yvonne Mkube from South Africa. <laughs> 
Carolín Nicole Díaz Pineda from Panama. Farhan Kunyaban from Indonesia. <laughs> Emmanuel Leo Bafula from Kenya. Jonathan Da Silva Heipel from Guyana. Kennedy Shegon from Kenya. <laughs> and Priscilla Vanessa Simon Crisis from Suriname who has finished her MSc program and will receive a graduate professional diploma. Thank you, Yap and Professor McLean. Congratulations to the, our new IHE Delft new alumni. Best wishes. Big applause. <laughs> Hopefully, you will also stay in touch with us at IHE Delft and keep us up to speed on where life is taking you after obtaining your MSc degree. So do not forget, stay connected. Now I would like to invite Professor Eddie Morse, our rector back on stage to officially close the ceremony. So that brings us uh, almost to the end of this uh, ceremony. And uh, what I would like to do is actually, I would like to congratulate all of you. I think it's uh, super nice uh, that you managed uh, to do this. Uh, we sometimes try to make your life a little bit difficult, uh, but we do hope uh, that it's also in your benefit. And I know that I had lunch with some of you and I appreciated that. I will miss those talks. We're going to lose a, a very good guitarist. Uh, but uh, I also appreciate to stay here. One of my privileges um, as a rector is actually that I'm allowed to sign your diplomas. And it's not that I like to make all those signatures. What I really appreciate is that I also have the opportunity, one, to see from which country you're coming from, but also the topic you have been doing. And I think uh, just here you heard a very brief summary actually on what you have been doing, but I can tell you that I think the diversity of all the topics that you have been studying is uh, super interesting, and I hope that you will continue doing that. 
So, like Maria Laura said, we would like to be in contact with you, and I am personally also very much looking forward to hear from you what you're going to do. And we would be quite interested to see how we can continue the contact there and see also how we can support you in what you're planning to do in the future. So please let us know what you do, and I hope to visit your, in your countries. It's not possible to do this without support with a lot of people. In the beginning, I already mentioned, and I would like to thank maybe also on your behalf, your friends and families, but also all the others that have supported you here. But I think also colleagues of IG Delft, your lecturers, professors, but also people a little bit behind the screens in administration helped to make this possible. So I would like to thank, hopefully also on your behalf, all the people that are there, and I would like to ask a big applause for everybody that helped you achieve this. So like I said, we're almost at the end, but we will not do the end without the Big Bang. So here you will stay a little bit for a picture. We allow, we'll explain what's there. I hope to invite you also for a reception and a party at IG Delft, but also for all the people that are sitting a little bit to the right-hand side and have supported actually your study here. I would like to invite them as well and give them the opportunity to congratulate you later on at IG Delft during the reception. With that, I would like to close the ceremony and would like to thank all the speakers. I think I was very inspired by all the presentations that I heard, and I hope you were as well. And I hope to see you at IG Delft, so I can also personally congratulate you over there. So thank you very much, and see you very soon. Thank you, thank you Eddie. Very good. I am um, ready for uh, final words and practical words. But first, oh, this alumni officer, you know, you are now alumni, so you, the one who lives in Africa and in Egypt has missed an email that I sent yesterday. If you're back in your country, if you're back in Egypt, and if you participate, uh, if you will be in Egypt for the conference or not, next Monday, there will be an alumni gathering. So ask me and I will tell you where, please. Okay, go back. Of course, we must have a picture of this important moment. So I invite a photographer to the podium and he will take a few photos from the stage now. After, and after the cortege has left, he will be also taking some group photos from the organ balcony. So, all graduates who want to be in this picture, please gather on the right side of the door, so over there. Yes. No, okay, good. I had to change my script. So this year, the second picture, we will do it on that side. Okay? Left from the doors. Uh, and we invite you for the pictures, if you wish, to wear the blue scarf that you have received. So for now, please be happy or not. Just stand up for the first picture with your diplomas. See you. Thank you. And now it comes a word of caution before you leave. Very, very important. Take care of your diplomas. They cannot be replaced. They cannot be duplicated. So please keep them with you or in a safe place at all times, including tonight's party. This concludes the official part of our program for today. Please join us as we continue celebrating 
at IEG Delft. Graduates, please remember to remain behind if you wish to take the group pictures on the left. Just now, as the cortege leaves, we will enjoy a recorded final music. May I ask you all to stand up for the procession of the cortege leaves the church. Thank you very much. Congratulations and big applause to all new graduates and all best wishes.